That's a great point to even <clears throat> segue into the next question because you I mean you referenced 1919. You know, we know what else was happening during that year in the world, and sure. even um, what you're, you know. Uh, I mean, there's so much that you said that I want to comment on, but for the sake of time and for the sake of this discussion, yeah. I just want to segue into the piece that, you know, this is all happening on, uh, you know, it's like you said, it's not just the FBI and it's part of this colonial state because the same state is what, you know, as they came to the new world on this land, you know, slaughtered the indigenous people, brought African people to work here, implemented and you know further develop these 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 um these programs and, and not just African people you know colonized people you know people from all over the world but I think it's important for us to understand that you know the colonial state in its various forms has not gone away. And so I just want to see if you can continue to you know share with us and talk about like the deadly FBI attacks though on the American Indian movement in the 1970s at Wounded Knee. And we would also like you to you know if you, you know if you can also speak about comrade um political prisoner, Leonard Peltier, who is still locked up. And if there's anything else that you want to um, share. Yeah. AIM was initially modeled on Black Panther Party when it was formed in Minneapolis. It was a police to police entity. Well, they were not carrying weapons at the time because, well, as was the case with the Panthers, very shortly after uh, the party was formed, the patrol, uh, patrolling police in the urban context by people, as Huey Newton put it, with a rifle or a shotgun in one hand and a law book in the other to make sure that the law was adhered to and they had the right to carry weapons openly in California at the time. That was repealed by state legislature and directly in response to the, uh, the Panthers availing themselves of their legal rights. In uh, Minneapolis, it was already illegal to do that, so it was observational, and that's what the Panthers were doing by the point that AIM was formed in 1968, okay? So you had that. Well, that caused them to be targeted to a certain extent, but uh, AIM was the National Liberation Movement in the direct terms understood at the time. And you had treaty relations between the federal government of the United States and the various indigenous peoples. So there were, well, as we thought at the time, 371 that had been, you know, ratified and were in effect. They were still on the books. And treaties according to the Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 10, and international law under the 1967 um, Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties are agreements, relations defined, whatever documents, but relations between sovereign peers. All right meaning each Indian reservation <laughs> considered a minority group in the United States, in each Indian reservation that is defined by treaty and the, relate, and the people that occupy that are sovereign nation. Right, exactly. They're occupied, subjugated, subordinated to the United States. So, you know, when O'Malley talks about decolonization, that colonial reality is the predicate for the existence of the United States. Absent that 95% of the territoriality of uh, the 48 contiguous states of the United States comprising its land base, there is no United States. So that's the fundamental. They would not have been able to use it without imported chattel labor from Africa, but they were enslaving indigenous peoples at the same yeah. time. Exactly. Smaller numbers, smaller population, and partly that was because of mm. discriminatory effects of the invasion. But what AIM did was target enforcement of the treaties, treaty rights, not civil rights, treaty rights, national rights, national liberation rights, a trail of broken treaties to 
Washington, D.C. in November of 1972, <laughs> which is, if you think about it, the very culminating phase of Richard Nixon's campaign for re-election and seized the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs, redesignated an indigenous embassy, and you end up with uh, some fairly highly placed Nixonites delivering money to get them out of town and agreeing to consider the 20 points having to do with sovereignty that they delivered at the time. This is a formal agreement. Right. Very embarrassing to Nixon at the time. So then they are majorly targeted. The American Indian movement is targeted by the FBI high scale. Hoover is already dead, by the way. Term um going 12 Pro has been terminated. And it leads to uh a sort of difference in the approach taken and that's not a a difference in certain tactics were not used against uh aim that were used against the panthers they were all used and vice versa but there's a difference in emphasis and what they were doing with aim when it came time for the serious repression to begin which is when aim attempted to hold a um press conference at uh, Wounded Knee Massacre site from 1890 on the uh, Pine Ridge Oglala Reservation in South Dakota. They were surrounded and the uh, feds field tested something called uh, Garden Plot, which is a scenario for repressing um, civil disturbances or disruption written by a guy named Louis Giafrida or a governor in California named Ronald Reagan during the 1960s. And that called for bringing together um, federal forces, mm -hmm. including military forces as need be, National Guard, local police entities, and uh, patriotic organizations, read vigilante groups from the area, and um, basically physically crush. The, ob the entity and the individuals, which right. are objectionable. It's the way this worked, because you have a quasi-sovereign government, a puppet government administered by the United States, is that they could utilize personnel under his authority and claim a certain sovereign immunity in terms of the application of U.S. law. Uh, basically, the FBI fulfilled the role that in the third world was fulfilled by the CIA in collaborating with the repressive government, which was installed and supported by the United States and utilizing its police personnel and vigilante organizations to form death squads. And hmm. you take out the opposition that way. So the most impactful series of COINTELPRO's into the Black Liberation Movement during COINTELPRO itself was against the Panthers, you end up with about 30 dead Panthers that are attributable to that campaign, plus or minus a few. And there's some could go either way, but call it 30. Yeah. And a whole bunch more doing eternity in prison. That's 30 piece, yeah. Mm -hmm. With AIM, which is in a smaller population group, uh, base in a smaller organization, really, numerically, than the Panthers ever were, you got double that number and change. There's at least 69 um, people who were killed during three years beginning in 1973, which is when this press conference evolves into a, a siege that lasts for um, 71 days. There were two people killed in Wounded Knee itself. But in the aftermath, you get this other 67. Uh-huh. And nobody goes to prison as a result of uh, FBI activity on Pine Ridge. They're talking about 
shortage of personnel, but you get the highest concentration of agents to population mm -hmm. in the history of the Bureau at that time. There's about 10,000 population on Pine Ridge. You got 70, roughly, 69 at least, people killed during this period. That level of violence mm -hmm. corresponds perfectly with the level of violence evident in Chile during that same three-year period, which commenced, oddly enough, on September 11, 1973, with the overthrow of Pinochet. Trick, trace it out for the next three years, and you got a really severe rate of fatalities politically. You know, people floating down rivers, been shot in the back of the head, buried in walls right. and so forth. Okay, same level of violence for political reasons. The same methods being employed by the FBI that the CIA used in Chile. Okay, nobody noticed. They're talking about, at that time, Detroit being the murder capital of the country, according to the FBI uniform crime report and I can't remember off the top of my head how many per hundred thousand that came out to but whatever it was the rate of death on Pine Ridge for political reasons alone was something like 14 times as high right. in that context ultimately you're faced with two things either abandon the struggle or defend yourself for real right. exactly okay that's the context in which the FBI sets up this rate mm -hmm on uh, an AIM compound. Actually, the AIM people were there to protect the people in the compound, so-called the residences of an AIM. Um, well, we call just call them AIM supporters. It gets more complicated than that. Right, but right. anyway, they were there for security purposes. The FBI sent two agents in to initiate a firefight, uh, having a whole Bureau of Indian Affairs police SWAT unit immediately deployed in the area. Supposedly, they were engaged in uh, weapons training nearby. So as soon as the firefight was initiated, they were to come in with overwhelming force. It didn't work out the way they intended. Both agents were cut off in their attack. They initiated a firefight, and then they came under heavy fire, and their uh, comrades as you were, the other FBI agents took cover in a ditch outside the property, didn't go in for hours, by which point these two were dead. And an Indian guy by the name of Joe Stunts. Okay. Peltier is in prison, although he didn't do it. And they know he didn't do it. You got this whole falsification, uh, total travesty of a trial. Uh, I had two co-defendants that were tried separately because he had sought refuge in Canada. They took them to trial first. They were acquitted by an all-white jury in Iowa on the basis that they <laughs> had acted in self-defense under the circumstances. So they went judge shopping, found a, another judge, uh, disallowed the evidence that was introduced in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, against uh, the co-defendants, Bob Robidoux and Dino Butler. Um, came in with a whole different theory. They either believed their first theory they presented in Cedar Rapids, or they believed uh, what they presented against Peltier, but they could not possibly have believed both. And yeah, yeah, he's I mean, still in prison. 